Okay, this is the second video of the triathlon specific training workout videos, whether you are a novice or an elite triathlete to help you with your strength, your stability and your mobility on the swim, bike and run legs. Now this video is the bike leg. Like the first video, I'm gonna run through each exercise in order so you can follow along. Right, let's get started. this is the bike leg you guessed it we're doing leg day but we're also doing chest day because we haven't done that we missed that out of the swim leg we've put it in the bike leg but hey you're using a bit of upper body to hold on to your bars and to your handlebars so that fits the big thing about leg day on the bike is we're covering quite a few areas obviously you want to do glutes hamstring quads but we're doing that all in one day because we're trying to go through the positions that you are on the bike. So sometimes you might be up on the handlebars or out of the seat, so it's gonna be a lot more quad dominant. Other times you're gonna be down on the aero bars, so it's gonna be a lot more glute and hamstring dominant because you're in more flexion. So we're gonna go through each one of those. The first one I like starting off with is lunges. Okay, lunges are a nice one to start off with because you can start off unweighted and you get the single leg work done before all the double leg work like squats and deadlifts and those sort of things. So when you're doing lunges, make sure it's a long start. You're trying to aim for front foot loading on the lunge when you're doing that. And I'll just start off body weight. So you're just warming up with this one. You might have done a little bit of spin on the bike first to warm up with, but what you're trying to do is get about 75, 80% onto the front leg when you lunge, okay? So that means you go down into a forward squat pattern to get the weight here. When you push up, so if I'm coming down to here, I've put the weight into my heel, to push up, I push the heel down. That's the crucial part, okay? Think about pushing your heel down when you're pedaling. That will give you way more glute when you drive through. If you don't do that, if you drop down here and then push up like that, it's gonna get a lot more knees, not much glute. So make sure you are coming forward so you're biasing the single leg work and you're working on the muscles that you wanna use when you're cycling glutes and hammies, okay? Good thing about lunges is you can step it up. So as you get better with this, you can work on, I'll do the other side, loaded lunges. So these are eight kilos, so that's 16 kilos. Just be careful how much you do because, you know, loading up your patellofemoral joint straight away may be too much. So if you're conditioned to this, that's fine. So weights are one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, if you don't have weights, is using a power band. So if you've got one of these things, these are great because you can use that as your load. So it's nice to mix it up a little bit, do a bit of variables. So that could be my front foot loading, okay? And the good thing about having it on the front foot is it forces you to think about loading down and pushing through that front leg, okay? So it is a lunge, but it's much more biased to that front single leg, okay? And really working on through here, driving up to help you with your power. So that's a nice one to start off with. Again, with all these exercises, you can either choose to do three sets, as okay, in three rounds of the same exercise and go from exercise to exercise to exercise, or you can just do one round of all of them, do it three times, up to you. Okay, next up is squats, essential for leg strength on the bike. Now you can do it in heaps different ways. You can do it with a bar on your back, you can do a goblet squat like this, or you can do two kettlebells like I like doing, so splitting the weight into two, and going this way. Now, make sure when you are squatting, your feet are wide with this to give you wide base support. Your knees are nice and out by you, over your feet if you like. So when you sort of squat down, your shins are vertical. I don't want you sort of too close like this. Go a little bit further apart, and that'll give you a bit more base of stability. When you're squatting, you've got to try and keep your upper body upright as you drop down and then pushing away. Trying to keep your weight even between your heels and your toes, okay? Not sort of loading forward onto your toes or sitting back on your heels too much. And try and avoid the temptation, like I just keep them up on my shoulders like this, try and avoid the temptation of dropping forward because those weights are gonna go forward. But also, you've gotta keep your angles right. So when I see myself here, I wanna keep my shin angle the same as my back angle. I don't want my back angle going forward too much like I'm leaning forward. That turns into sort of a deadlift. So keep your body upright as much as you can when you squat down and let those knees go forward. The other thing I don't like doing is going too low, especially those with back problems. So you don't want to go, you know, if you've got a bit of a back problem, you don't want to go too low where you round your back out like that, especially under big load, okay? So if you're getting those loads up, try and keep your hips just above your knees. 
stays in the safety zone. Okay, third one up is deadlifts, and I mean Romanian deadlifts or hamstring deadlifts, and that's gonna work a lot on, obviously, hamstring or that posterior chain, help you with the bike leg when you're down on the bars. These ones you can do like the squats. You can do it with weights, you can do it with a bar, you can do it with a band. So things at home you can use, and it's really helpful. If you're not going to the gym and you want to do all this at home, you still can if you've got the equipment. So with your main deadlifts, again, I like to do doing either using two kettlebells or one, depends on what weight you've got with them. But these ones, same position of the feet. They're as wide as the squat leg, knees as wide as the squat one. So with this one though, it's a little bit different to your squat. When you drop down to your deadlift, I don't want your bum going down. So your bum goes straight backwards and your shoulders go forward. So you can see it's sort of the opposite of a squat. Whereas a squat, your upper body was upright and your bum dropped down. This one, when you drop your weights down, your upper body goes forward and your hips go backwards. And you should find that if you get this right, you keep your spine in neutral so you don't arch your back, you don't round your back. Keep your spine in neutral, sit your bum back like it's a filing camera. So it goes backwards and then it comes forward. Now a lot of people get this a little bit confused about you know, where their bum should sit. You shouldn't drop it down into a normal deadlift. This is a Romanian. We're trying to focus on the hamstring. So keep your hips high and think of like, that's the sort of position you're gonna be in the bike as well. You're gonna be down that position where your bum's high up on the seat and your upper body's forward. So it's really appropriate for those long rides where you're down on aero bars to get in that position and work those hamstrings in that position, okay? So that's a really nice one to do. Again, like I said, you can use a long bar. You can also use a band. You can even use the band to increase the load. So what I like doing, especially when I'm at home, if I wanna increase the weight, and all I've got is a couple of light kettlebells, you can then put the kettlebells with the band like that and then use that as the load, okay? And again, it's variable, so as I go down, it's a bit more forgiving, and then when I come up, it's a little bit harder. So again, with this one, try and remember that you keep your weight even through your feet and your heels, all right? And to come up from that position, don't go and arch your back. From that position there, push your hips forward, okay? That's the cue. So try and go hips back, bend at the hips, knees are bent, but they don't come forward, and then hips forward again to that position there without overarching your back. Okay, the hip thrust is the last of the four in the leg set before we move to the chest. Now with this one, I would start unweighted until you get the technique right. And be careful not to load up too much anyway because you've got a lot of leg loading days in the week if you're cycling. So remember, all these leg exercises that we're doing, keep the weight, either unweighted or whatever weight you're using, not too heavy because you are just complementing those bike sessions. You're trying to improve technique, trying to improve a bit of strength to help you with that bike leg, not to replace it. So with this one, use a bench. Now at home, you could just use your sofa or your bed or anything like that. I would always put a band on because it's gonna get more glutes. So this is where you can put more load on without putting more load this way, especially if you don't have much equipment at home. Now, I like using a bar if you don't have anything. This bar can be you know, five, 10, 20 kilos, fine. Like I said, don't load up too much. If you don't have anything, start off with a broomstick to give you that technique and that you know, positioning. So again, with your feet, go wide, just like a squat, just like a deadlift, knees out of your feet. Now, if you've got the band on, I'm already working on the glute here, so that's great. So with this position here, sit there on your sort of shoulder blades. You're gonna push that up to the ceiling, but what I want you to try and think of is not arching your back, pushing it up when you go up. What I want you to think of is pushing your heels down. So tighten your core here, drive your heels through the floor, okay, to that point there. So you should be trying to get a full contraction through the glute and the hamstring, okay? So this is not really a quads exercise, this is dominating right through the back here again, because hey, we've done a deadlift, and this is our second sort of back of the leg exercise. So for this one, try and go full extension to the top, okay? Right up to that lock, if you like, of the hips. So you're really getting a good contraction there. And you'll find that'll probably be enough for you. If you're just starting out with this stuff, this is gonna be enough work through the back of the leg to try and keep up that tone keep up that strength, and then you can start loading it up as you get better. Okay, last one on the legs is working on your calves, namely calf raises. So often forgotten one, really important for cyclists, especially if you're one of those people who has a bigger calf or like a smaller calf on one side than the other, or if you've had Achilles problems or any other sort of calf-related injury or ankle injury, 
that you're recovered from, they haven't got quite the calf strength. Now you don't really notice that on the bike too much, but trust me, if you start working on getting your calf raise even left and right, you'll be more even on the bike and less problems up the chain. If the calf is not doing a good enough job on one side, somewhere it's got to compensate and somewhere it's going to fatigue. So I would work on for this set, for the bike leg is doing calf raises on one leg off a step. So I would go onto one side off a step. Now you need to have the foot just right where those metatarsal heads are, hanging on the edge of the step. You can use this for balance, because I'm not too worried about balance for this one. You just focus on pushing all the way up to get the full lock and the gas shock on the way up, and then slowly down, sort of about half the speed right to the bottom, and then drive again. So you're after power with this one. Now this is just for balance. You try not to hold on, because if you hold on, it's gonna make it easier and you're gonna cheat. So just use that for a bit of balance, just working on trying to get as high as you possibly can with that. And you'll notice that, you know, I would probably only go for about eight, maybe 10 reps max, okay? You don't need to go any more than that. And you'll find there's a very quick fatigue rate with your calves, okay? So something to work on. Again, you're gonna do either three sets in one go, okay? So left, right, left, right, 10 each, or eight each, whatever suits. But you could also just do one set of that and follow that rule of doing three rounds of everything. Um, over time, but definitely work on those calf raises. We're going to do them again in the run leg, but we're going to do in the sole air, so not working on the gas rock, working on the sole air. So there is another calf raise coming up in part three. So as mentioned, the chest workout is in the bike leg. Now I put it in the core section because, hey, we're going to do push-ups in this section for chest, and that's very fitting as you have to maintain a plank, which is a core exercise, so it works well in this section rather than the leg section. So, first one though, we're gonna do is a chest press, and we're gonna do it with a kettlebell, so you need some sort of weight. I like using kettlebells, you can use a dumbbell if you want, but we want, want you to do single arm work, all right? And this way, you're gonna focus on a bit more shoulder in the chest. So, I put a band around a pole like that. Now that's my lateral load. So this is to increase work rate in the shoulders while you're doing chest, okay? Because you need the shoulder external rotation work to be sitting on those aero bars in the bike. So I want to be able to doing chest work, which is like holding myself in there, so I'm doing chest work, but I want to be externally rotated. I hope that makes sense. So when I do my press, I'm going to do it with an external rotation load, which means I don't have to make this super heavy, all right? So because I've got two loads going on here now. If I made that really heavy, it's gonna cook my shoulder too much. So this not too heavy, bit of load here. From this position, you're gonna simply do a one arm dumbbell or kettlebell chest press. Now, when you're in this position though, when you start, make sure you are protracted, okay? So I want you to protract it here, all right? Because that's gonna position you're gonna be on the bike. And then when you come down, it retracts first. So I'm going from a protracted scapula, retract, then down on that 45 degree angle. So you can see I'm on a 45 degree angle here, I'm not out here, I'm here. And then pushing up, when I finish, I protract again. So retract, drop down, tap the floor, push back up, protract. And it's pretty simple stuff. Now this will really help those of you who've got a bit of scapular wing issues to try and sort that out, is to get your nice retraction going in and then coming down, and when you push up, make sure you get the protraction. With this one, you'll find that this load really starts kicking in around rep seven or eight, and you can feel that lateral part of that shoulder working pretty hard while you're doing your chest workout. So I love this one because it really helps me with my stability in the upper body, as well as getting a chest press at the same time. So the other thing about doing single arm work is for those of you who are so used to doing double arms all the time, and hey, we're doing double arm when we do a push up, but if you're so used to doing two arms at the same time with say a barbell, like a bench press, you don't get to sort of realize the difference between your left and your right shoulders. And this is where this can come in. I like putting a single arm chest workout in because we do have a double arm one, but the single arm really helps you understand that, hey, you've got one shoulder that's probably stronger than the other, and it's important that you get those differences ironed out. That may mean you do reps and sets, but even just doing, as in more reps or sets on the weaker shoulder, but even just doing single arm helps you with your 
stability. If you do two arms at the same time on a bench, then you won't get the body trying to work out how to stabilize one shoulder versus the other. The single arm you do, and that's where you're gonna get the gains from. So that's your single arm kettlebell chest press with a lateral band. Okay, second chest workout is good old fashioned push-ups, but I've also got an advancement spin for those of you who are quite strong, who can do more. Maybe you're a swimmer and you've got quite a decent chest press. You can do more on your push-up and you wanna do something heavier. I've got an advanced with the band, I'll come to that in a minute. But I like putting the push-up in, especially for triathletes, because it teaches you a bit of core work and holding a plank at the same time. So as long as you're doing push-up with all your plank stuff, which we learned in the swim leg, then this will work really well for you. So with this one, I always like setting yourself up properly. So when you're doing your push-up, make sure that you are wider than four point, okay? So if you think, we start off where your hands are, just go one hand wider and that's about right. I don't want you going super wide and trying to do that because your elbow is gonna come in on a 45 degree angle. So start off four point, go there and then come forward and then step back with one. So when you arrive, your shoulders should be sitting over your hands. At that point there, make sure you're not lazy through your core. So you turn your core on, get your neutral spine here, okay? Get your transversus on, get your brace on with your core, clench your buttocks, okay? Keep that sort of full plank there. When you come down, it's shoulder blades first, then it's elbows, and then it's elbows, and then it's shoulder blades. Okay, so think retraction, elbow flexion, elbow extension, protraction. Make sure you don't drop or lift that bum, okay? So keep that on, retract, down, full push up, all the way up, okay? And just banging out those repetitions. And now if you take your time, you'll realize you're doing a full body core workout at the same time with that, which is really helpful. Like I said, for those of you who need a bit more advanced, if you find you can bang out 12 of those, you're not even cutting a breath, it's fine, get a power band, okay? It doesn't have to be too heavy because these are quite brutal when you put a bit of load on. Round your back, under your arms, okay? Put your hands in this way, like that. Then you've got your load, okay? You don't need plates or anything like that. And again, you're still in that plank type position, which gives you more chest workout, more shoulder, more arms, but you're still doing some core work. So, same position, exactly the same. You'll find it's easier at the bottom, okay? Because the band gets less, but then really hard when you push up, all right? So those ones are really nice to work on to get extra strengthening. It takes your breath away um, for your chest workout. So we start off a little bit of core work with that push up, but for the bike, we need a little bit of anti-rotation work, especially for the run, but on the bike leg, you don't want too much movement going through from your spine when you're powering those legs. So an anti-rotation core exercise is really, really good. What I like doing for the bike leg is a pal off press. Now, with this one, you can do two different options. What you can work on is doing it in kneeling and simply, you know, an entry level one is getting a little bit of band tension and just pushing out and coming back. Now, what that's gonna do is help you try and stay center. The band is trying to pull me, rotate me, so I'm doing anti-rotation, but I'm not moving with this one. So this is just for some, maybe your entry level work where you're just trying to, can I just maintain neutral, keep my buttock on at the back here, so I'm in a kneeling position, but this buttock is on, and then just trying to go and push that out, feel that load kick in, I'm feeling this work here because it's, I'm trying to rotate left, technically, because the band's trying to rotate me right. So as I come back in, load goes off, as I go out, that load on the left hand side comes on. So this one you can work on one side at a time, helps you with your deficits left and right, especially if you've got some old back problems, maybe on the bike you're feeling a bit tight one side, maybe it's a bit weak, you can start working on one side more than the other, which will help you stabilize more in the saddle. Now, if that's too easy for you, then you can work on some rotation. So you'll need to step away a little bit more with that because you're gonna go from the same position but rotated in. And this time what you're gonna do is then rotate your body that way. Now this will require way more strength on one side and way more stability. So you've got to be stable in that first position and then start working on some rotation. And I can feel that working really well through my left hand side abdominals to help me rotate that way. So this will help just increase that strength on one side. And of course, flip around, get your eight to 10 reps on each side, change legs, 
get that right band tension, and then you'll might notice that I've got to stay nice and parallel, and then pivot around, and you'll feel that work on the other side. Try and make sure that your shoulders are facing your hands, your hands, if your head is facing your hands. So don't sort of move your hand, leave your head behind. Don't twist your body. Just keep everything rotating together. So you're working that top half as a unit, and you'll get that really good work on one side through your abdominals. So that's your advance with the rotation. Okay, last core cool one for the bike leg is a control exercise more than a strength exercise. Now I like this because it helps people who tend to overuse their back when they are doing hip extension. So this is really good for your bike leg because it will help you stabilize and generate the power from the hip rather than relying on your back all the time. So for this exercise, you'll need a bench or maybe a sofa or your bed and you hang your hips off the end of it. Now, we sometimes call this reverse lumbar extensions, but I'm gonna call this a hip extension because we're trying to not extend the lower back, not extend the lumbar. We're gonna try and keep that lumbar in neutral. So the key thing is, is not doing it like this where you raise one leg and arch your back. We're trying to not arch your back. So with this one, try and keep neutral here, all right? which means you have to work really hard on your abdominals at this position. Push one leg in the ground. You're gonna use a straight leg, use your glute, to extend your hip only to the point where you can control what's going on here. So I need to fight really hard here to keep my neutral spine. I raise this as far as I possibly can, trying to really think about the movement. I can't see it that well, so I'm gonna to have to feel what's going on, make sure I'm in neutral, extend the leg to the point where I think I'm gonna arch my back like that, and then bring it back down. As you get better connection between brain and core, you'll find you can stabilize and be more efficient here. You stop overusing the back, and you really target that hip extension, which is what you need when you do the power on the bike. So this one's a really nice one to do. Make sure, you know, when you swap legs, dig the other leg into the ground, okay? You can also grab on, to, if this is a, a, a bench in the gym, you can grab on with the opposite hand. So if I've digged in my right leg, I can dig in with the opposite hand like that and stabilize, okay? So this is a really nice one to do, to keep you working on hip extension and isolate that movement, and you're training your core to be stable here. You're training the stability part component, which is gonna make you way more efficient in the saddle to drive that power through the legs, okay? Okay, you've got four mobility exercises for the bike leg. Now, you don't have to do this at the back end of the workout. You can do it at the front end, especially if you're really tight through your hips from maybe a cycle the other day, then you can start work on that beforehand before you would like to go into your workout. Some people like to do before, some like to do after. First one we're gonna work on is your pigeon. Now, this is gonna get your glutes and your hip external rotation. So, we call this hip flexion, external rotation, but you're gonna feel it through here. And I like doing it up on a bench or a sofa because it's easy to do, it's much easier than the floor. The floor's a little bit more advanced, especially for those who are tight, you wanna start up on here. So what I'll do, use a bench or a sofa like that, get your weight through your hand first. Some people get to that point and they start feeling tightness. Now if you're that sort of person and you're already tight, tight there on your glutes, say my left one, then you've got a bit of flexibility work to do. So, aiming to try and get your knee closer and closer and closer to the bench. The way you do that is to drop down vertically with the back leg, okay? So you slowly drop down to this position and you start edging back with that back leg, bending your knee until you get that knee slowly down to the point where you can get it flush with the ground. At that point, if you to stretch, that's okay because that's pretty full on at that point. So that gives you external rotation of the hip, but it's really working on the whole glute component on that back part of the hip to try and loosen up and give you some more range and flexibility through there. That's a really nice one to do. One minute each side, two or three of those each way. Now some people you'll find, like me, have got a tighter hip on one side, and that may mean they've got a tighter back on one side as well. So make sure, if you're one of those people and you get to the point where you do the other side, and you go, ah, that's very tight there. Start working more sets and reps on that, maybe a little more time. Now, don't get too aggressive with it, it'll ease up in time, but you may find you have to do a little bit more work on one side to get that knee slowly down than the other. Don't find yourself cheating where you put your knee forward and do that, okay? That's a bit of a cheating way of doing it. You wanna aim that your tibia, this part, is absolutely 
sort of parallel with the bed, okay, not on an angle. So you get to that point, don't cheat, and then try and drop down in that point there. Okay, just be mindful of those of you who had old knee problems, that can be a little bit tight through there, so just work on what you can. So that's your glute one first up. Second one is an awesome one for your hip mobility, and I highly recommend that you do not miss this one. It's also important for your run leg, but hey, it's in the bike leg. This one here, you start off in a kneeling position, okay? That is not the stretch, you just start in a kneeling position because you then slowly move into hip flexion of the front leg. So we call this hip flexion ER, meaning hip flexion external rotation. I'll show you that in a minute. Think about the front leg. You're gonna go down with the same hand onto the front of the foot, and that's where you're gonna load bear down on that foot. This hand, just place it, same sort of thing, load bearing. So I'm trying to suspend myself with my upper body so I can relax my lower body. This one here, I want you to slowly think about creeping forward with both hips. So my left hip's going forward, my right hip's going forward, therefore my right knee's going forward to the point where I start feeling a bit of a stretch. Now, at the same time, I want this front leg externally rotating that way, meaning the hip goes out, or the knee goes out, which gives me external rotation of the hip. I'm trying to get more range through here. I'm gonna get a stretch through the groin and the hip on the right hand side with the sun. I'm also gonna feel a hip flexor stretch and maybe a little bit of groin on the left hand side. What I want you to aim for is to have the same amount of stretch left and right, obviously in different areas. It's my right side, it's sort of the groin and the hip, the left side is hip flexor. So they'll be feeling in different areas, but you should feel like you're almost splitting in half a little bit to the point where it's not painful, it's just uncomfortable, and you just need to sit there. Now, if you try and hold yourself up there, you're not gonna stretch. So you've really got to weight bed down through your hands and just breathe this one out, go through the minute, and try and relax, thinking about your pelvis going closer to the floor. That's the direction you're trying to go for. And then obviously, once you've got a minute, then you stop the other side. Just remember where your foot was, remember where your knee was, go back to the opposite position, same drill, and then go into that position, try and find the same amount of stretch both sides. Now, this one more than ever, you're probably gonna feel, oh my goodness, I've definitely got different legs, as in one hip is tighter. This one, I can feel my groin is definitely tighter on my left-hand side with this one, okay? I don't have as much range through there, and so I feel this one needs a little bit more work going this way than the other way. And you'll find people who are sort of maybe left or right-footed, and had that for a long period of time, if you're getting old like me, you'll notice the difference between left and right. That's one way you can start working on that because if you've got the flexibility improved and it's more even, you're gonna be more even with your power on the bike, which is gonna make a little bit of difference, even just doing this to how you're gonna perform on the day. So this is a really nice one to work on. So being in this position, it leads us into our hamstring stretch. So once you go from the hip flexion one, go straight into your hamstring one. So it's basically the same sort of position, but I'd probably go forward a little bit with that leg then come down again, all right? Then what you do, and you might just have to play with how far back that left knee goes. From that position, you don't go forward, you go backwards. So what you're gonna do, if this is my right leg I'm stretching, I'm gonna push my right hip, my right bum, to the wall behind me, but stay forward. So I'm gonna try and stay forward with my hands and my shoulders and push my right hip backwards until I feel that whole hamstring right from the epistial tuberosity, right from the buttock, all the way through to the back of the knee, I can feel that stretching. And this is a really super easy way to stretch out the hamstrings because, hey, if you've got a bit of tight hamstrings, as in it's affecting your mobility on the bike and your positioning, it's gonna start giving you problems trying to be down on your aero bars. So if you've got a bit of flexibility, this is a really nice one to work on to get your hamstrings a little bit more mobile, make that whole position of the bike a lot more comfortable. You can see you know, this sort of position here, it's not absolutely mimicking that position on aero bars, but you can see when I have one leg up and I'm forward, I'm in that sort of type of position, which helps me with my flexibility in that rounded position. So make sure, same drill, get your foot in the same position. Again, you're probably gonna feel left and right a little bit different. So when you push backwards, you try and keep your body forward, then you'll feel it here. Always making sure you can see my knee is bent, okay? I don't wanna do a straight knee one, I want a bent knee one, and just trying to work on how far can you push it back, trying to get as much of the whole of the hamstring stretched out as you can, and again, that's gonna make a quite a big difference to your mobility or your position, your comfortability on the bike when you are cycling. So, last one is your QL. Now, 
I do this one because many people, and many friends of mine, are getting problems on the bike. They're also getting problems on the run, of course, but they're getting issues with the tightness in their lower back and it's coming from their QL. So I would try and work on QL stretches as a finisher. And this one here, you're not doing a hamstring stretch, okay? So you've just done your hamstring stretches. You're trying to keep this knee bent. You're trying to do lumbar flexion, all right? You're also doing lumbar rotation. So this is my right leg, I'm rotating left, okay? This hand, some people have tight hips and their hip might be sitting up. This hand's actually pushing that hip down, but also acting as an anchor to, for me to push my shoulder back and really rotate to the left. Once I've got that left rotation, so I think I'm gonna go then side flexion, and then I'm gonna feel that right in there. I'm also gonna get a little bit of oblique. So if your obliques are tight, you're gonna feel some of that abdominal tightness there, get rid of that too. But try and work on really pulling down chest to thigh or ribs to thigh. So I like thinking like, okay, right ribs to right thigh, and my left shoulder is rotating, my left side of my back is side bending, all right? So this part here is gonna want the one you're gonna hold, and again, one minute at a time, left and right sides. And you'll notice that, you know, the, the sore side, if you've got a sore side when you are cycling, that side is gonna probably be the tighter side and you need to really start focusing on trying to work on getting that hip down because that would be probably part of it. You can see my right hip's tighter, so my right knee's up more. So I have to really work on that, rotate and side bend. So it's quite important when I get to this stretch, it was more of a pattern stretch that I've done my pigeon, I've done my hip flexion, I've done my hamstrings. I'm loosened up through the hips and the hamstrings so I can really just focus on my lower back at this point. Because if I do this stretch, say after a run or a cycle, I'm going to, this is going to be really tight. If I do this first, it's going to be quite hard to do. If I do all the other stretches through the hip first, get them loosened up, get rid of all that tightness, this is going to be, not be a breeze, but I'm going to target this area a hell of a lot more, and that's going to make it, you know, just be more efficient in the stretch, do a lot more work. So there you have it. That's your bike leg done. Lots more to come in the run leg, so check out part three, and we'll see you then.